These guys came out of hibernation recently that I've done in a previous video. So I just wanted to tidy everything up a bit, clean this, get their outworld um, filled with some substrate and decor and connect it all up. Something I do once a year just to get everything nice and fresh. Because now that the weather's warming up a bit, they're going to want to venture out and forage around. So that will give them some space to do that. Now they've got some water on the end here. But what I'd like to do is just get this smaller test tube and we'll get some honey water in here just to give them a bit of a sweet treat they can access at any point and then connect that to one of these blocked off exits here. There we go, nice mixed up honey water. It's not we. And if we get some cotton wool in there, that should soak up the honey and let them drink from the cotton wool. I might actually give this a bit of a clean because I think there's a lot of corpses in there so they might have been using it as a little makeshift graveyard. I don't know if you can see it, yeah there's loads of corpses in there. But I'm going to go clean this out before we attach the honey water. I'm going to put some clay around the edge of this because it doesn't fit really well as it's a smaller test tube which will just ensure they can't squeeze between anything and get out. Because as I've come to learn, the smallest of gaps, they will find it. And they will get out. There we go, that should do it. Enjoy, boys. Or girls, I should say. Right, let's lift this up. And it's probably going to be disgusting under here because this is the layer that sits underneath the nest and helps generate some humidity in a gradient across the nesting area. Come on. Ew. So as you can probably see, we achieved that just by putting cotton wool ball, cotton wool balls in there and then just keeping those damp, which they still are. And then that, that humidity will kind of wick up into the nest in this area. It's actually really grossing me out just looking at it, so I'm not even gonna touch it. I've got some gloves. I don't know what all this gumph is in there. That's all the ant wee. Right, gross. So, let's clean that. Do you know what? It's looking pretty stubborn, so I might leave this to soak for a while. I think it's worth giving it a good clean just because it'll only get worse over time, won't it? My arms are too hairy. I just saw that peeking up over the glove and I genuinely thought it was a spider that got out and crawled on my arm. Alrighty, let's make this outworld. I don't think we need to do anything too elaborate. The reason being is because I tend to clean it out every year anyway. As I said, um, I'll put them into hibernation in October again. So I feel like if we just give them something nice and basic, just to give them some exploring space and the option to bring some dirt into their nests. That should be more than sufficient. We'll get some dirt in and then I'll have a look and see if we can get some form of decor just to liven it up a little bit. Let's put some grass seed in here as well, just to see if we can get some greenery going. Whoops, maybe I should have just kept that to one side just in case it all decides to go wild. Don't want it completely filling the tank up. Not sure what I'll do the next time around that I have to put them into hibernation. I'll probably have to actually move the whole thing because thankfully last time, most of this had all dried out completely. So there wasn't really any ants in the outworld. But if there's a lot in here, I don't just want to detach it and chuck them all outside. I want to try and keep as many as I can in the nest. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's get some pine cones in there, some random leaf litter. I feel like I'm being a bit lazy with this. This bit of wood bugs me because whenever I look at it, all I can see is like a little animal splayed out with his eye there and a horn on his head. I can't see anything else. Maybe if I put it that way. Yeah, that's a bit better. I mean, that'll probably do. 
should be more than enough for them to forage in. That's all right, isn't it? Like I said, we'll get some greenery that will start springing up in here too. Sweet, I think that looks good. Let's close it off for six months. I do still have access from this top bit just for dropping in prey items and watering the substrate. So now all we need to do is just connect up some tubing to the nest area and then I'm sure we'll have some workers foraging around in here in no time checking out the new area. There we go, nice clean humidity layer. Next up we'll just add some cotton wool, some fresh cotton wool to hold some of that water, keep it nice and humid in the nest. And we'll only do it on this half, so then it does give them a bit of a gradient. I can't really show you because I can't lift it up, but there's microscopic holes underneath the nesting chamber. It kind of covers halfway uh, in line with where these cotton wool balls are. And if they want it a bit drier, they can always move down to the other end then. Just on a side note, the formicarium that I built in a previous video is establishing itself. And on the note on the grass seeds, I don't know how well you can see it, but, but they are starting to spring up, which is good because it's quite low light where I'm keeping these. So high hopes for the new one. The nest I put in here, they've burrowed somewhere. Can't see them anymore. So I'm assuming they're in there, burrowed away somewhere, making some nest chambers. Nothing as of yet in the visible part that I can see, but hopefully over time, oh, there I am. Hopefully over time, they'll take advantage of this area too. And that's that. All the guys housed, outworld set up, and connecting tubing, which we should be able to see. There's already some brave explorers making their way into their new outworld to see what the crack is in there. Yeah, quite a few in there already, which is good. And there we can see they're already testing the boundaries to see if they can escape. So I will probably keep an eye on this for an hour or so just to make sure there isn't any weak points or anywhere they can get out. And you can't really see her, but the queen is kind of tucked away in the corner there, surrounded by an absolute horde of brood. And now that this colony's fairly established, I'm hoping that this year it really explodes. As it'd be really cool to see them landscape their outworld and move stuff around to where they want it. And if I hadn't mentioned it already, this is my Lassia Sniger colony. Super common here in the UK. They're the guys that you'll always see walking around on the pavement. And I don't think I said in my previous video, but I will just quickly address it now. So all the species I keep here, they are native to the UK. As I know, I mentioned releasing some into the wild, but there's no, uh, no foreign species I'd be releasing. I can already see them moving stuff around in there and exploring the new space. But they all seem fairly happy. Let's hope now things are warming up they'll continue to thrive and we'll see some real big numbers on this colony. So that's it for today. Thanks for taking the time to check this out. And until the next time, stay safe and take it easy.